Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Brentown. My name is Dave Bren, and this is my first City Skylines playthrough series. I've been playing the game for a couple of years now, and I've been playing SimCity and all of its derivatives uh, pretty much since they came out, which for me was way back in uh, middle school. Um, and I just love this style of game. I love a really um, a well thought out sandbox style game that allows you to really be creative within the play the gameplay. So um, I'm really excited to get started here. We're going to play on the Foggy Hills map. Um, got a little bit of a long load time here, but that's all right. In the meantime, I wanted to say some thank yous and give some huge shout outs to three YouTubers out there who've been a huge inspiration to me over the last year or two. Um, namely, those are Target, Zardis, and Biffa. Uh, these three guys uh, have produced some amazing City of Skylines playthrough videos, uh, in addition to some other games as well. But I've really just watched hours and hours of their content. They are really thoughtful, really well thought out videos, um, very creative and unique designs, and it's great also to see a lot of the kind of back and forth that goes um, goes on within their own videos, shouting each other out and um, you know using each other's ideas and um, and kind of going back and forth. And it's really nice to see a, a community of folks that are so excited to play this game that they just have to share it with the world. And honestly, that's really what I'm doing here. I I don't know if I'm particularly qualified at all to produce uh, videos for this game, but I just love playing it so much, and I love watching uh, those other fellas' videos so much that, uh, in a way, this is kind of like my thank you note to them, to say, hey, you guys inspired me so much to get out and play this game, and I just want to share with you um, what you've shared with me. Um, I don't know if what I'm going to share is at all unique or interesting or new, but for me it was just so exciting to uh, to learn from those guys, and I hope that through whatever videos I make here, I can also inspire some other folks to uh, get out there, play the game, come up with some interesting and unique ways of playing the game, and it just is a, it's a really great feedback loop of creativity and fun. So here we go, I am just getting started in the center of my little town here. So uh, I just plopped in a couple of roads there. Let me take a second and look around the map. Uh, now, I've actually looked through this map quite a bit already to make some plans. And it's called Foggy Hills. And I imagine it's because of these two hills over here, maybe? Uh, they don't look particularly foggy. It could be the hills back here, which look foggy, but I think they're just looking foggy because they're in the distance. Who knows? Point is, we've got two hills over here, and if we... Can we look at the terrain view? No, not yet. But when we do look at the terrain view, we'll see... You can just kind of clearly see there's a nice edge right along the hill over here, and then there's a valley that goes right through the middle. So I think it would be lovely to have a little hillside community up here, some low-density housing, a little road that kind of comes up and around through the valley, maybe comes around through the back and then hooks up with the, potentially hooks up with the highway back over here. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, but at any rate, let's come back over here to the center of our town. So we've got our one little stretch of avenue here. I'm going to use dirt roads for the rest of my city layout for the beginning here because I don't want to spend all that money on avenues. But that being said, I am going to plop in just two sections of avenue here and here on both sides so that I can put down some markings for my road layout. The reason for that is I, I'm certain that in a little bit, once my city starts to grow, I'm going to upgrade um, this road here and this road here fully into an avenue. But at the start of my city, I really don't need it to be avenue, so I'm going to leave it mostly as dirt road. Just these intersections I'll leave like that. So. Now, in terms of where I want to place the roads in here, which will be kind of where my residents are zoned, I want to leave, um, obviously, at least four squares here so that I can zone four by four for my commercial. But I also want to leave a second row in between so that I can put in um, either a walking path or a buffer zone of trees 
to kind of cut down the noise pollution between the commercial district and the residential districts, which will be kind of in here. So I'm going to be kind of going for like a grid style layout with residential on the insides of the grid and commercial kind of banding the main uh, roads. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to plop in a simple 8 by 8, oops, 8 by 8 grid in here. Like so. There we go. And one more out here. And I'm just using those blue markings. Slope too steep. That's weird. Is there no space already occupied? Okay. It's just too short of a road for some reason. Let's do that. And it's like that, maybe? There we go. Okay. So, um, and as you'll see here, I'm going to space out my connections to those avenues by going every second intersection in the interior residential layout. Just like that. There we go. So that's our first square of residential zoning. And you know what? I think I've got enough money to start out with a slightly bigger square. That's one reason why I like to use the dirt roads in the beginning as well is it allows me to build a little bit more infrastructure right at the start. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing over here on this side except I'm gonna do um, yeah I'm gonna do the same thing like this and like this we're gonna come out um, how far here a little bit further, right there. Okay, we'll go up two, over two, down, right there, and across. Great, and then it'll connect to our avenue up here and down here, just like on the other side. Perfect. Okay, so I've made a little bit of a bigger zone for uh, the residential space because we usually need a little bit more of that than we do of industrial zoning. So let's start dropping in our utilities. We'll start with the power plant. I'm going to put that, I don't want to put it too far from the freeway because the trucks need to get on and off and deliver coal to this guy and I'd like them to have as quick a route of doing that as possible. So let's do that and this will allow us to run power line, although you know, is that no, it'll be fine. Okay, we're going to run a power line then down the back end of town. Just going to run it straight down here so we don't have to interfere with any of our residential zoning. And then we'll cut it across here where it'll pick up our water and sewage. So we'll drop the water pipe there, the sewage pipe there. Hopefully those are far enough apart. Ah, no, they're not even close. Okay, I was hoping they would both catch that wire, but they don't. That's fine. And I'm pretty sure those are far enough apart to not interfere. We can move it later if they do. Okay. Now, we have to put our highway access. We only have these one-way roads. We don't have freeway ramps yet. That's all right. We're going to come out with this guy. One, two, and three. We'll come all the way out seven. Something I learned from Target is that if you go out seven on a slope like that, it'll give you the maximum uh, or the, the least steep gradient all the way down. So that's a nice little tip and I learned from him. One, two, and three. See so if we go five, six, and seven, it'll be out. And then if we go eight, it cuts way back to three, which is way too steep. We don't like that business. So let's just drop that back here. One, two, three, come out, seven, and connect up there. Great. Now we got to flip this bad boy around so folks can get in and out of town. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete most of this over here because no one's going to use that stretch of road for a little while. Great. Okay. I think we all, all we need to do is run some pipes and connect them all up, and I think we'll be ready to start zoning. So let's drop in here what would probably be you know, our legacy water main, the very first water main run down through the center of town. And then they probably also ran a water main along this avenue and this avenue. And then they probably came in here at a later time. And I mean, I would ideally like to run them along the road, but who cares? 
Let's not be picky. And we're gonna need another one up here just to catch that edge. There we go. And let's just do the same thing. We can just kind of run a bunch of parallel pipes off of this single water main. Seems like a relatively efficient design. And you know, I'm gonna go ahead, because I have the money, I'm gonna invest in a little bit more water infrastructure for my inevitable next development out to the other side of this avenue. I'll just drop that all in place. And of course, I have to make sure that my utilities are hooked up to that, just like so. Okay, everybody's hooked up and we are ready to start zoning. I'm going to need to drop in a zone right next to this power main to make sure I get power over there. And then we'll just fill up this first four chunks over here. And I'll also go ahead and just drop in a little bit of industrial right there. And why not, while we're at it, I'll drop in a little zone of commercial right here and right there. There. Is that five? Oh no, that's four. There we go. Great. Hopefully that'll be able to power will be able to jump over that gap. I think so. And I think with that we're ready to hit play. Here we go for the first episode of Brentown. We're hitting play at 11 minutes in. There we go. All right. Well, oh, you know one thing I wanted to do is jump right into my budget panel and just drop the budget for power and water all the way down to 50% just at the start, so I'm not hemorrhaging too much cash. I already am. Look at that. I'm going down a negative $1,000. That's all right. I've got plenty of uh, money still in the coffers just in case anything untoward happens, but I think we should be fine. Now, my favorite moment in the game is... Oh, oh, this is not my favorite moment. I don't like that this is happening. Is that because I dropped the water budget too low? Uh, let's see what the water... Oh, water availability is zero. That must mean something. Oh, I don't think we hooked up the pipes over here. Oh boy, it's a good thing I figured that out before I ran out of money. There we go. Okay, now where were we? Right, let's hit play again. And what the moment I am waiting for right now is that first wave of cars that comes rushing into your city when you first get started. That is my favorite moment. And here is the first one. This is one. I'm waiting for that big old wave with those residents. When the residents first show up, it's a it's a pretty wild, sudden rush. Anyways, it looks like we've got a fairly balanced demand for everything because I plopped everything kind of at once. Oh, here they come. There they go. Look at our guys. They're flowing in. It's like an ant farm at this stage. I love this when they all come running in. It looks a little intimidating, like your traffic might not be able to handle it, but... That's just that first flow of everybody moving in, finding their new home, settling in. There are more folks coming in. So, um, and kind of like that, it looks like we've quickly filled up and we still have a lot of demand for residential. I'm going to slow things down here and just check out our milestones. Okay, we're halfway there already. Yeah. So we are trying to get to Little Hamlet. That'll be at 440. Our population's 206 right now. Uh, we'll get our access to taxes and loans, as well as garbage, health care, and education at that level. And in order to get us up, so it looks like one, two, three, four. This is something that I wanted to kind of check out. Four, and if we count this as maybe five or five and a half, five or so of these squares is about 200 people, which says there's about 20 or so, or no, 40 folks that live in one of these squares. So that's a good uh, estimate for us with doing this low density residential, at least at the start before they're upgraded. If I go ahead and do four more of these, then that should bring us in about 160 more people. But we need about 220 more people, so I think we're gonna have to zone all the way down here and all the way down here and maybe even a little bit more over here to get us up and over that 440 mark and I think that should do it. We're still losing money but we're just about in the green. I'm gonna hit this up to full speed. We got huge demand for residential so those folks ought to be moving in real quick. There comes a few cars in there 
And I imagine we'll see another one of those fun waves of a bunch of cars coming in as all these houses come online. And look at that, we're at 390 already. We are well on our way to 440 to our first milestone. It's gonna be exciting, let's see. We got our factories building up over here. The balance, hey, there we go. All right, we made it to Little Hamlet. We got ourselves a little fireworks display. Uh, that is pretty fantastic. And as I said, we got access to all this great stuff, but we're gonna take a look at that in the next video. Uh, we're gonna just keep these videos to one milestone at a time, you know, to keep them a little bit more digestible. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to hit like and subscribe. It'll really help me out. And uh, if you have any comments about how my city is going, uh, how we can expand it, and um, you know, as I've learned from my other folks that I've mentioned, Target, Zardis, and Biffa, I really love all of the great interaction that they have with the YouTube community out there and other players of this great game. So if you guys uh, want to participate in my city building adventures in any way, please leave some comments down below. I'd be taking comments for city design and layout, and even maybe for naming certain districts as we go down the line. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. My name is Dave Bren. This has been Brentown, and I'll see you next time. Bye!